So if I had to describe society uh, with one word, um, I would call it my frenemy. Sometimes when I am on good terms with society, we're very close, we're tight, we're friends. They take care of me and I take care of them. But if for any reason you disagree with society or question it, society tends to become a little bit of your enemy. So this love-hate dasal is what I call my frenemy relationship with society. So as you can tell by my accent, um, I grew up in New York because my parents, who actually originally were from Jaipur, moved to New York in the 1980s along with a series of other Jaipur Jain jewelry families who left Jaipur, left their society, left their families in pursuit of prosperity and business expansion. So you can imagine for me growing up then I did not just have one society, but I had two societies. I had an American society, Western, diverse, multitude of cultures and opinions. And I had a very robust, targeted, focused, Jepper society. And balancing those two things, I gotta tell you, is an interesting art in itself. But where Jepper society played a very strong role was that I got an opportunity to have a community. I had an ability to have Indian values. I learned how to read and write and speak Hindi. And I always knew my traditional identity and where I was from. So that's the good part of society. But then what happens when you start questioning the directive path that society has created for you? What happens when, as a woman especially, you don't necessarily agree with the next steps of society. Then the challenges start kicking in. So whether you're in New York or in Jaipur, you know, our society has a very clear cut role or rule or path for girls. You know, you're allowed to get a great education. You're allowed to have friends and life and a family. And you're allowed to even work, but only up until a certain age then you're supposed to switch into your true role, marriage, family caretaking, live off the expenses of your husband because your job is to be a homemaker. Now I, like many people, did not agree with that, especially being because I was a part of the other society as well, the American society, where we were taught that we were not just about four walls, where I was taught that the world is bigger beyond me. And frankly, I wanted to discover it. I wanted to understand what is my role as a global citizen. I wanted to be a problem solver. I didn't just want to work as a hobby. I wanted to work for myself. Now that did not make my Jaipur society in New York happy. They questioned my values. They questioned my respect for my family. They questioned where, my, where I was coming from. They would say, Tu bhajana chati hai? Tu ye karna chati hai? You're trying to do this, you're trying to do that. Kuch tu sharam kar. Ladki hai, ladki ki tarah rahe. Have some shame. Be a girl and behave like one. But I fought. You know, I rebelled. And I begged my parents to be a little patient with me, to ignore the society to please understand that my vision and my business venture is going to one day make you proud. Now, they were patient, but the fact is that when you're living with such a society, you know, there's a lot of fear in how quickly you can support this unknown vision of this girl of yours who's balancing Indian and American culture. And so they get pressured by society. Be a better father. Show your daughter the right path. She's being confused. It's your responsibility to get her in the right direction. But eventually, even that society allowed my parents to be who they are. When? Well, when I started winning all these lovely awards. When? When I started making money. When I started growing my business. 
And when I became economically empowered and actually independent of that society, then society that questioned my ways suddenly started accepting me. Suddenly started telling me, ki, wah, kya beti hai. we're very proud of her. Started telling my parents, you should be so proud of your daughter. And you know, my dad would always say, look, I always was. You just took forever to realize who she is. Now, I'll tell you that uh, this experience, this life experience, you know, which takes you in different roads, because you're constantly, as a woman, dealing with societal stereotypes and barriers. It's been a journey of mine for the last 10 years, um, especially in the work that I've done in India. You know, a lot of women talk about the barriers that they face when it comes to society. And there's hundreds of thousands of stories out there. But my work in rural India really helped me understand not only how deep those stereotypes and challenges can be, but also the impact that economic empowerment can create, which is magnanimous, it's tenfold. And really, that's what I wanted to do with the work that I did. I wanted to work with rural women to help them understand how to maneuver through the tussles of societal dynamics, break those barriers through economic empowerment, and show that it can lead to productive change. I'm just gonna run back and forth because we realize technology is not our friend today. This is Kailash Ben. She is a rural village woman who lives in a village called Manpura Machedi, which is actually not too far from Jaipur. She, like many other rural women, got married at the age of 15 and, you know, started producing kids. And by the time she's this age, which is roughly around 28 years old, she's seeing the realities of her life. So from 15 to 28 and probably for the rest of her life, this is the classic image of who she is. She's isolated by herself, she's in this like dark room, and she's cooking, and she's within these four walls of what we call a parda, or a veil. She hasn't really seen much outside of this world, because even in rural Rajasthan, there are other societal rules, right? A girl can get education if she really wants it, but only up until a certain age. It's more important that she learns how to cook and how to take care of her family, and most importantly, when she hits that dreadful adolescent age, when she gets her period, she best be getting married. And if she doesn't, then society questions her value, her respect to society, and also her purpose. However, you know, rural women in Rajasthan, or rural women in general, that's not how they think about themselves. That's actually not how they feel. They actually believe they have a lot more to contribute. They actually are very passionate about changing the village around them. And they fundamentally believe that they're capable and responsible to be a part of that economic system. This is Meena Ben, who is in a village in Dholpur, and she's a part of a self-help group program where she works as a CRP, or a customer relations person, and her responsibility is to help other women in her villages get access to household loans. And she's been doing this for the last couple of years and she earns money from the government. So when I met her, knowing what I knew about societal barriers and constraints, I asked her, I said, Meenaji, how? How are you able to do this? And she said, Didi, look at this bail gadi, this cow cart. It has four wheels on it. And each wheel is equally important to function to carry its weight and also to make sure it can move forward. Am I not one of those four wheels? Am I not as equally responsible to manage and make sure my house moves forward? So actually, Didi, it's not how, it's why didn't this happen earlier? Of course I should be earning income. And you know what hit me? And it hit me hard. And it made me realize that, wait a minute, these women aren't succumbed. They're not, you know, Pardavali women. That's not who they want to be. 
It's what they're being surrounded by. And we needed to figure out how to break that barrier because this is true greatness. So in 2011, um, I started my company, Frontier Markets. And I really, I started it because prior to that, uh, when I was fresh out of college, I started working in India in microfinance. And having lived in over 5,000 villages, interacting with people all across India, I'd recognize that, you know, one solution is not enough. That frankly, rural households face a lot of challenges. And can I create a company that looks at products and services that can be accessible to these households to make their life go from difficult to maybe a little bit easier, so easy life. And of all the different challenges that I've seen, I really wanted to work on the one that I face the most and I realized as a daily struggle and might have an instant solution. So that was electricity. In India, over 300 million households do not have access to regular and reliable electricity. And that is an astonishing number and it's insane when you think about what happens. The reality is that women suffer the most. Why? Because it's the woman's responsibility to get up suddenly and find that mombati or candle to make sure she can light something so her children are feeling safe. And every woman will tell you she like bumps her head against that wall when she's panicking and looking for that mombati. It's that woman that stays up at night worried about her child's future because the child was not able to study at night because there was no electricity. It's that woman who worries about getting burnt or someone else getting hurt when they dreadfully use that kerosene light when they're cooking or when they're going out into the field. And so many more are stories about why women recognize this vicious cycle. So it was only obvious that when I decided to introduce solar solutions into rural villages, that these women were the easiest to convince. They were the earliest adopters. They recognized the innovation, they recognized its value, and they really wanted to be a part of that system. Problem was that they didn't have any income. So they couldn't buy the product to make the decision for their household. And that's when I decided to start a program called the Solar Sahili Program. In this program, it's pretty straightforward. You know, we wanted to include women into the discussion. They give phenomenal ideas about how solar can affect their lives. So we train them in solar. We also train them in marketing, in sales, and in repair, after sales service, to make sure that she can earn income and at the same time also empower her villages, become a change maker. So what happened? Well, basically, uh, you know, 2,000 women joined the program. They started earning income on a regular basis. They invested that income on their children's education. They invested that income on their households. And they were feeling proud. They were feeling confident. And they were also being globally recognized by millions. However, within their own society, they were facing challenges. People started questioning their intent. Why does she have to go and do work? Why does she have to sell lights? Why does she have to be walking around at night? What is she doing with that money anyway? What is her intention? Why is she, is she going to forget her family values? Isn't she supposed to be taking care of her kids? And all these barriers became realities. In this picture over here, you know, these are three of my rock star solar sailies. And this lovely woman over here who's speaking directly to, I'm sure you recognize, our chief minister of Rajasthan. And she was brilliant. Her name is Kamlesh. She's from a village uh, in Sarmutra, which is in Dholpur. And it's one of the poorest villages in Rajasthan. And Kamlesh's story always fascinates me because she was married when she was 13. She started having kids when she was 14, consecutively, okay? And she's now at the age of 28 herself, and she already has a 16-year-old daughter who again is getting pressured to get married. And she has never been educated. Imagine, you're 13 years old, you hardly know anything, and you're already married off, right? And you're giving that path of what society tells you to do. 
So she came to me and she said, Didi, I don't know anything. I've not seen anything outside of the world. I'm not educated, but I have this pressure. Help me earn some income so I can make decisions. So we brought her in, we trained her, we got her active, and she is a rock star. She's helped over 300 households get access to solar solutions in her village. And because she was such a rock star, when the chief minister said she wants to meet these famous solar sahelis, I naturally was going to invite her to come to Jaipur. She met the CM. She, you know, talked to her directly, demanded change, told uh, Vasundaji to scale the program. Why are there not enough of us? Do you not understand what the electricity problem is? I mean, she was brilliant. So, you know, so after that, I mean, I had tears in my eyes watching her grow. And she started crying. But she was crying for a different reason. So I said, you know, Kamlesh, what's wrong? And she said, ma'am, what am I doing here and what are they thinking? And I said, look, I don't understand. She said, you know, when I was leaving from Dholpur to come to Jaipur, my brother-in-law spread this vicious rumor that I was leaving to go to Jaipur, not for this work, but for prostitution. And since these last three days, I've been getting all these messages of anger from different, different people in my society telling me that my father-in-law will kill himself because of the kind of kartute or the work that I do. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? We're taking this picture, we're framing it, and we're sending it with you to throw it at your brother-in-law's face. So she didn't throw it at his face. What she did was she took it and she gave it to her father-in-law. And her father-in-law had tears in his eyes. He immediately grabbed her hand and he took her in front of the entire community. He held the picture and he held her hand in the other hand. And he said, this is my Bindari. This is my daughter-in-law. This is who she is. This is what she does. None of you could even dream of accomplishing what she's accomplished. Please understand who she is. And Kamlesh saw this as an opportunity. So she looked at her father-in-law and she said, Bauji, I have done this to you that I will marry my daughter when she will earn money and keep her attention. So I decided that I'm only going to have my daughter get married when she's able to earn income and she can take care of herself. And her father-in-law looked at her and said, you're our star, do as you wish. And you know, it tells me, right? Whether you're modern women, traditional women, rural women, urban women, look, we're all a part of a society, of course we are. And we recognize the importance of society, the community, the nurture, the support. But really, only when they're your friends, right? And how do we start understanding the impact that women can have in the overall nature of society? You know, when a woman is successful, especially these kind of women, they're not just keeping the ownership of that success for themselves. They're trying to get others involved. They're thinking about their families. They're thinking about their village. They're thinking about their communities. They are actually thinking about giving back to that same society that has been questioning them over and over and over again. And really, we recognize that economic empowerment, letting them have access to making their own decisions, is a tenfold impact. You know, my New York society, my Solar Saheli society, understood, finally, when we broke those barriers on how to create a friendship journey for us to create impact where we have helped over 180,000 households get access to clean energy solutions in Rajasthan. Now, what I'm hoping to see and what I'm hoping that we all understand is that we communicate with our society in a way that helps us understand where they're nurturing and where they need to continue to be nurturing so that we as women don't need to break any more barriers. We have open paths to achieve true and utter greatness. Thank you.